Hi, my name is Mike Lidada G, and here is part two of Jesus is not the king of the Jews, Jesus is the king of Israel. A few times I made a mistake in my last video where I kept on saying Tamar is the wife of, she's the daughter of, of a priest, okay? That's why when they found out that she was pregnant, they wanted to burn her because that's in Leviticus. And that's in another video I did. But anyway, let's keep going. Now, where we are now, we went through everyone that said uh, that Jesus was king of the Jews. And we got to see that the Jews benefited from seeding the word to make it look like uh, Jesus was their king. And if you, if you notice... What did the Jews do? The Jews, when it benefited them, they said Jesus uh, was the king of the Jews. And when it didn't benefit them, they said, uh, uh, you know, uh, he is not our king. Caesar is our king. So this is speaking like a forked tongue. So when the Jews were saying that, it was like the serpent, you know, the snake. I, I forgot how to draw a snake. Uh, you know, the serpent snake, and its tongue is forked. So why was it doing that? Because there's no truth in them. They they kind of wishy-washy. Now, I say this all the time. When you listen to people and they, they talk on both sides of their mouth, they are telling you that they are serpent seed. They're serpent seed. So when, when, it, when they want to have Jesus crucified, oh, he's king of the Jews. And when they, when the, then Pilate said, should I, you know, give you your king or crucify your king? What they say, we have no king and Caesar's the king. Okay. Caesar's is the king. So you could see the forked tongue coming out of the mouth of the Jews in that. And this is the thing. If you start seeing people with forked tongues, when they're saying they're playing both sides of something or um, they say something, then they switch up or gaslighting. Same seed. It's the same seed. Because we can't trace lineage anymore. Because when the Romans uh, attacked Jerusalem in 66 AD to 70 AD, the temple was burnt down. The Jews burnt it down. Why is that important? Because it has all the genealogies. So now we find out the serpent seed through lies. And truth is the seed of God. My beloved son. Hear ye him. Okay, that's the difference. Truth seed, serpent seed, forked tongue. They said he's king of the Jews. Now, what did Jesus say? He never said he was king of the Jews. He never said it. In fact, he said his kingdom is not of this place. If you look at the Jews then, then it's not from here. And what does Jesus say to Nathaniel? Born from above. We're going to get to that in a second. Because this has tremendous implications. If you get this, this has been hidden since 33 AD. Just, just, you know, how many people say Jesus was the king of the Jews? Every church has been saying it for a long time. But meanwhile, when you start looking at it, it's not. And why? Because we have been under, we are in darkness. Now we're coming into the light. Jesus said before they crucified, the, light, the darkness is coming. So now we have the light coming. All right, so now where we're we going. We're going to go back to where we were a minute ago in John 12. Because John 12 is, is okay. When Before Jesus was crucified, he was coming to the Passover. And, and Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. Um, and then they put all that stuff on the ground. And he was on the, on, on the donkeys and the ass. And he's coming to Jerusalem. Then the cross. And, and in the cross, he was crucified. Now remember, what were the Jews saying to him? The Jews were saying to him that had to do with the crucifixion that he was the king of the Jews. Okay, and then later they said he's not. Okay, but the people, when Jesus was on, on, the, on the ass of the cult coming into the Jerusalem, they said he was king of Israel. And that is really 
what we're talking about. Now, we're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this. And when we come back to this, it's going to be a big rug being pulled out from everybody. You're going to see a big rug coming. All right. So let's just read this again one more time. So I'm going to go down a little bit. Jerusalem. Um, okay. So right after Lazarus, they wanted to kill because on the account of him, this is, uh, this is, John 12, 11, because of the account of him, meaning Lazarus, many of the Jews were going away and they were believing in Jesus. And the now remember, there's Jesus. When I say Jews, there's Jews of Jesus. And that's Tamar, seed of the Old Testament. And those are the ones that believe in the truth. We have this in the book of Jude. So don't get this like hooked up in some nonsense. Know what it's saying. Because in the account of him, many of the Jews were going away, and they were believing in Jesus. On the morrow, a great multitude that came to the feast, having heard that Jesus doth come to Jerusalem. This is a big deal. Took the branches off the palms and went forth to meet him, and were crying, Hosanna, blessed he who is coming in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Okay? And as Je and and Jesus, having found a young ass, did sit upon it, according as it is written, "Fear not, daughter of Zion; lo, thy king doth come." So Jesus now is identifying with the king of Israel. This is our king doth come, sitting on an ass, colt. And these things his disciples did not know at first. Now remember, they didn't know this, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were having been written about him and these things they did to him. Now remember, this is for us too. The multitude, therefore, who are with him were testifying that, that he called Lazarus out of the tomb and did raise him out of the dead. Because of this also did the multitude meet him because they heard of his done this sign. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, ye see that ye do not gain anything. Lo, the world did go after him, go after Jesus. And there were certain Greeks out of the coming. Okay, so let me leave that that. Let me go now to the other places where we see, where we see, um, oh, not there. I, like, again, apologize for using this. The other one kept on crashing. This is an old iPod. Hey, iPad. First generation. Okay, go. In fact, I learned how to do that a little faster. Okay, so now we're going to go to Nathaniel. And then we're gonna we're gonna talk about something else. So these people knew that Jesus was the King of Israel. Now let's go to John one. This is a big deal. You know, some parts of the Bible you think, you know, why is he saying this? Okay, we're gonna go back a bit. Uh, okay, we're gonna go back a bit. All right, let's start here. So this is the beginning of John 1. This is the one we did find his brother Simon and say to him, we have found Messiah. Okay, we found Messiah. So they know that that's Messiah, which is being interpreted the anointed. Ano the Christ also means anointed. And he brought him unto Jesus and having looked upon him, Jesus saith, thou art Simon, the son of Jonas. Now remember Simon, Simon Peter, the son of Jonas. Jonas means dove. And, and later Jesus calls him Bar-Jonah, son of the dove. Why the dove? The dove is the Holy Spirit going on the person. But why Jonas? Because Jonah is the same Jonah who was in the mouth of the big fish. And what made him pop out of, what made, what did Jonah say before the, the fish let him out? The last words, you can go look this up. Salvation is of Yahweh. And what does that mean? Jesus. Yahweh Shua means salvation is of Yahweh. In other words, salvation is of Yah uh, salva uh, salvation of, uh, of, of Yahweh is Jesus' name. That's exactly what it means. So just keep that in mind. Which is interpreted rock. On the morrow he will go to the forest of Galilee and bring Philip. And he saith, be following me. And Philip, now this is like, you know, he's putting together the apostles. And Philip was from Bethsaida of the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip findeth Nathanael. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith to him, of whom Moses wrote in the law and the prophets, that we have found Jesus, the son of Joseph. Isn't that interesting? The son of Joseph. What Joseph are we talking about here? 
Think about it. Old Testament also. Who is from Nazareth? And Nathanael said to him, Out of Nazareth is anything good? Thing being able, Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming unto him, and he saith concerning him. Now look, Jesus talked to Nathanael. Lo, truly an Israelite in whom guile is not. So Jesus is calling him an Israelite, not a Jew. Pay attention to this. The Bible is very accurate. When you look at things, it's unbelievably accurate. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence me dost thou know? How do you know me? Jesus said. Jesus answered and he said to him, Before Philip's calling thee, thou being under the fig tree. Now what the fig tree? Why a fig tree? Fig tree. Remember, remember the fig leaves, Adam and Eve? They cover themselves with fig leaves. So he's under the fig tree. And this is the fig tree can be... Um, Interpreted today as as the fake Israel that Jesus cursed. Okay, I saw thee, Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi. Okay, the rabbi means master. Thou art the son of God. Now, Nathaniel just knew it right there. Son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Not the Jews. Really careful here. Not the Jews. Because Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to thee, I saw thee under a fig tree, thou dost believe greater things than these thou shalt see. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Henceforth ye shall see heaven opened, and the messengers of God going up and coming down upon the Son of Man. This is a big deal. I just got chills. Okay, now, now we're going to go. We've established now 100% that the apostles knew that Jesus was the king of Israel. Okay? Now we're going to see what the, what the Jews said about him before he was crucified. And we'll go to... Go. And, and this very interesting word, it's very interesting. Okay, all right, so, and in like manner, the chief priests mocking and the scribes, this is Matthew 27, 41, with the scribes and elders, chief priests, scribes, elders, the Jews, others he saved, himself he is not able to save. Now, this is really important, we're going to get to this again later, why himself he's not able to save. Just, just keep that in your mind. If, here comes the devil's if, if he be king of Israel, let him come down, save himself from the cross, and we will believe him. Okay, here is the serpent seed. If then, this is the sign that they want. They want Jesus to save himself. In other words, the, 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 the Jews believe that they could choose God and do the works. So, of course, they're in. In, in, um, they're, they're using the same understanding of how they become of God, which they don't. And they're trying to say, well, if you are, then you should be able to save yourself. And here comes, he hath trusted on God, let him now deliver him, if he wish him, because he said, Son of God, I am. With the same also, the robbers who were crucified with him were reproaching him. Now remember, the, the two that were crucified upon him, um, with him, there were three people crucified. The Jews crucified Jesus in the center. Then you have one on the left hand and one on the right hand of Jesus. Those two came from the state. The Romans put them there. Okay, the Romans. And from the sixth hour, darkness came over all the land in the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a great voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, Sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And certain of those standing there, having heard, Elijah he doth call. Now remember, the Jews already, the Jews did not see Elijah. Jesus told the apostles that John the Baptist is Elijah. So for somebody to say this, Elijah he doth call, that can only mean that he's a Jew. He's not a Roman, because Roman soldiers would have no idea. And in Luke 23, we find out that that same person that does the next work, we know, and he call out, and immediately one of them, them who the Jews running toward him, have taken a sponge and filled it with vinegar, and having put it on a reed to give him to drink. Now they did this to silence him, 
But the rest said, the rest. So there's a bunch of Jews there. Let him al- let alone, let us see if Elijah doth come. They didn't see Elijah come. About to save him, and Jesus, having cried with a great voice, yielded the spirit. And lo, the veil of the sanctuary was rent in two from top to bottom. Now, why is that important for the veil? The veil of the sanctuary. The veil of the sanctuary was ripped from top. God ripped it top to bottom. You see... Um, Judah's, Judah's fornication had to be torn out. You got that? By crucifying Jesus, they made a big mistake. Now, that's a big deal. Now, let's go to the other places where we see this now. Where, um, of Israel, king of Israel. Okay, next place. It was in Matthew 27. Okay, same thing. Go to passage. Okay, let me go down further down. And in like manner also the chief priests, mocking him one another with scribes, said others he saved himself. He's not able to save. Okay, this is uh, Mark 15.30. I started. To save the Christ. Okay, they're mocking him. The anointed, the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. You see, the other, the disciples, the apostles knew who Jesus is. The Jews didn't know. They want the sign. And Jesus said, no sign will be given except for Jonas. Of him being in the, in the, in the whale for three days and three nights. <laughs> So they're looking now for Jesus to prove that he's the king of Israel. Okay? But they were the ones saying that he is the king of the Jews. Now, we're going to we're going to tie this together and when when this gets tied together, it becomes unbelievably powerful. That that's why the spirit of God in truth once this starts coming together, then it's just unbelievable how it ties in. Okay, so now we're going to go to Luke 23:37 for a minute. Uh, let me let me get out of here, Luke. Okay, Luke. Oops. Twenty-three. Uh, okay, now we're gonna go to thirty-seven. Now, now here's another reason. Now thirty-seven. Let me just go exactly to thirty-seven first. Now we're gonna back up to it. <sighs> okay, we're gonna start here, and then we're gonna go back further. And mocking him also with the soldiers coming near to him. Oh, jeez. The soldiers coming near to him. This is the same account. Offering vinegar to him. Why are they offering the vinegar? Soldiers. So we know before they were Jews. Now we know they're Jewish soldiers. And saying, if thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. Now, if. Again, thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. Now, why am I going back to the Jews again? Because, again, it's showing that the Jews, um, uh, to save thyself, meaning if you're of the devils, the devils believe that you can get to God with your will. And that's why we have psychopaths, and we could see this, the people that uh, have psychopathic tendencies, a lot of times they're very rich, and and you can say that um, they have they have this illuminating feeling like you want to worship them in this world. Yeah, same thing. Uh, they believe that you can get to heaven by your will, and that's why that's a very big deal. Again, the Jews, if thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. See, the other one said, "Come down." These are saying, "Save thyself." Also, now. Uh, let me go back a bit, a bit for the two. And there were also two others, two evildoers, verse 32, with him to be put to death. And when they came to the place that is called a skull, again, the skull, the head, they were crucified with him, the evildoers, one on the right hand and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, Father, forgive them, for they have not known what they do. This does not include the Jews. The Jews knew exactly what they were doing. That's why 
what they did is they seeded the Bible to say king of the Jews because Jesus called them devils. So when people say, oh, forgive them for they not, Jesus is not saying forgive everyone. There's a, there's a qualifier. And parting his garments to cast the lots and the people that were standing looking on the rulers were sneering and saying others he saved, let him save himself. This is the same understanding of saving yourself. You can't save yourself. God has to do the saving. If this be the Christ, the choice one of God. If, again, if this be save yourself. Why? Because as the Jews read um, the Old Testament, what they do is they glorify their will. And that's not of God. That's not saving now. Saving yourself. God can only... Well, God sacrificed himself to save the children and mocking him also were the soldiers coming near offering the vineyard. We just read that and saying, if thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. And there was also subscription written over him in letters and Roman Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews no. and one of the evildoers. Now, these are the two crucified with Jesus. They were both reviling him that says it someplace else. And one of the evildoers who were hanged was speaking evil of him. Now this is the evil now doers. Listen to what they say. If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. From his perspective, he wanted to, to, to save himself. Remember, if a man uh, looks to save his life, he'll lose it. And if a man looks to lose his life, he'll save it. And the other answering was rebuking him, saying, Does thou, does thou, thou not even fear God that thou art in the same judgment and we indeed righteously for the things worthy now this guy's telling the truth he says yeah we deserve what we're getting this is we just we you should shut your mouth we deserve we did this the other guy didn't say that we did anything wrong the guy was justifying himself and say save me not just no saying that if you can if you are then save me whereas in this guy's saying we did we deserve and we indeed righteously for the things worthy of what we did receive back. But this one did nothing out of place. And he said to Jesus, remember me, Lord. You see this? You see this? Remember me, Lord. Who's, who's the masculine here? Jesus is the masculine. Remember me, Lord. The other guy wasn't saying that attitude. When thou mayest come into thy reign. Reign. What reign? Reign of God. Reign of truth. And Jesus said to him, Verily I say to thee, Today with me thou shalt be in paradise. And it was written, As in the sixth hour, and darkness came over the land, the ninth hour, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the sanctuary was rent in the midst. And having cried with a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, to thy hands I commit my spirit. And these things having said, he breathed forth the spirit. Okay. This is always a big deal now. So, what do we have? Apostles. Disciples. Said, Jesus is son of God. King of Israel. Okay? What did the Jews say? The Jews said that he was the king of his king of Jews. This is what the Jews said. And not the king of Jews. Okay? Do you see the difference? When Jesus was coming to the cross, those who are of God knew he is the king of Israel. This is why Jesus was here. But the Jews, what did they do? For their own profit and envy, okay, they crucified Jesus. What are we looking at here? Cain, Abel. What else are we looking at? God saw the light and he said, good. God doesn't see this. What they are trying to attain, 
God does not see this. You got it? Because these are lies. This is a forked tongue. Jesus is not the king of the Jews because when Jesus was experiencing the payment for the sins, he said, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? That means he was apart from God. So these, this is the night and this is the day. Here's our 24 hours every day. We are in the light. This is the darkness. The darkness is trying to get the blessing of the light. That's what's happening. That's why the Jews had to try and seed the Bible because Jesus said that these are of their father, the devil. That's what he said about the Jews. And these are the sons of God. Jesus never said he was king of the Jews. This was put upon him to fool people into thinking that 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 um, to glorify to glorify the darkness. This is a big study. This changes a lot of things, a lot, a lot of things. If you go in the Bible. Uh, there's links below. Go to the Young's Little Translation. Look up King of Israel. King of Israel. Not King of the Jews because like I said in the other video, this is only a small part. This is not the blessing of the whole of children of Israel. This is, this is the envy of the Judah that he had towards Joseph and he tried to kill him and sell him. And, and why? Because his eyes were lusting after those Canaanite women. Today, we, it, it, you know, uh, today people are lusting after like beautiful women and they lose their heads for the beautiful women and men. Okay? And you could say these are the same as the, the Canaanite women, because this is this is for desire, and the other is money. Okay? You gotta remember, Judas betrayed Jesus for money. Judah betrayed Joseph because he was jealous of Joseph. And and what did Jesus uh, what did Pilate say about the Jews? They had envy, same envy Judah had towards Joseph. And Judah hooked up with this Canaanite woman, which again, God had told them to uh, I don't know, kill all the Canaanites at one point. Why? Because of all the fornication, all the, 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 the sexual deviation or the Sodom and Gomorrah. See, I'm not even using Sodom and Gomorrah because that's low-hanging fruit. I'm not using that. That's low-hanging fruit. We, we, you know, the, now we're trying to really get into the big deal here. The big deal is that they, the serpent, wants you to glorify the devil's children and saying that Jesus is one of them, and they're saying that he's not one of them, as it suits them. <laughs> 